He says, look, for people who have not heard the law, they have a law that's already working inside them. And what is that called? That's called the conscience. So Abraham believed God and God deposited to him. That's all. He just believed God. He didn't work for it. He believed God. God said, okay, here's it. Righteousness is in your account. It's yours. That means God just favors you. Not because we deserve it. Not because we've earned it. But because of the goodness of his own heart. So favor is us receiving from God. Not what we deserve. But what he gives to us out of the goodness of his own heart. Favor. Grace. Somebody put it like this and you probably heard it before. Grace stands for God's riches at Christ's expense. So God's riches, Christ paid it, you get it. You and I get it. Grace, right? So he says, look, uh, if you work for it, then you can't say it's grace. So it's not by grace. Verse 5. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteous. That means if you don't work for it, but you just believe, then in response to your believing, God gives you righteousness. That is grace. Right? And think about this. It says there, God, him who justifies the ungodly. Think about that. God is holy, but he's still able to make the unholy righteous. Call you and me righteous. Today, the church struggles with man-made rules, ideas that we put on ourselves. Uh, and they were struggling with the law and with uh, other you know, things like circumcision and so on. The Jews who again took so much pride in the fact that they were circumcised was a sign of their covenant with God. He was saying, hey, that no longer holds. Because righteousness by faith is available to all who have this one common denominator, and that is who all who believe. Whether they are circumcised or not, all who believe receive this gift of righteousness. Are you with me so far? And therefore he says, he shocks them with this statement in, uh, in verse, he's a father of all who believe, not just the Jews. You can't claim exclusivity to him anymore. All who believe become his spiritual descendants. Okay? There's a promise that God wants to fulfill. What God wants to accomplish in our lives. For Abraham, the promise was, I will make you the father of a great nation. The promise to you, something different. Faith, righteousness, grace, common for all of us. We engage with God through faith, righteousness, and grace. But then each one of us has a promise for our lives. I would say it's God's purpose. It's God's plan. It's the, there are written promises, but there are personal promises. Things for your life. When you do ministry or serving God for something, you're not serving God to earn His grace. You are already in a place of grace. You're standing in grace. But you're serving God because... You love him. You want to honor him. You're thankful for all he's done. You want to, you know, further his kingdom. You're serving because of that, not in order to earn something. We rejoice in our tribulations. Knowing this. Why can we be joyful even in our tribulations? Why? Knowing this. That our that tribulation develops endurance. Endurance builds character. And character reinforces the hope we have. You build endurance. Build it. So it says, tribulation develops endurance. Endurance builds character. We all need that. And then, when you have that character, you have in the life we live now, don't draw your identity from Adam. Draw it from 